Hi guys, I'm Christopher Gallardo with Cover Geekly. How are you guys doing? Hi, good, yeah, Chris. Good. How are you? I'm doing good as well. So <laughs> let's get started with this little icebreaker. So you exit the vault and you have to take one companion with you, either from the games or anything you can think of. Who would it be? One. One? One. One. I mean, the ghoul. Ooh, if I, ghoul? I mean, he's a survivor. Mm. You, no one would mess with you if you had the ghoul. Definitely. Mm. Oh, what companion would I take with me? Well, I'd have to take my daughter, of course. I mean, that makes sense. She's the most efficient and able-bodied person that I know. So, And she'll look after her old man, so that's good. <laughs> can I choose a dog? Can I choose it? See mm -hmm. Can I can I can I can I have a companion in that aspect? Anything you can think of. Is it is that my companion? Boom. Is it? Canine Boom. companion. Canine companion. Canine companion. And let's start with you. So you've mostly been in more independent projects like Emancipation mm. and also Disjointed, but now you're stepping into a more established universe. So what would you say is your favorite aspect about the world of Fallout and how did that influence your transition into Maximus? My favorite aspect about the world of Fallout. Well, my favorite aspect about the world of Fallout, I think, is the wasteland aspect. I, I, that's a vast, that's pretty general of a statement. But I do think that Maximus, as opposed to our other main characters, is the only character who's lived in his entire life in the wasteland. Mm. And I think that's about how I wanted to start in the development of the character. Is like, what are, what are the wasteland's rules of morality? You know, and how, how do I shape Maximus's mind to be uh, aligned with? survival in the wasteland. And Ella, you certainly aren't unfamiliar with the world of video game adaptations because you also portray Jinx in Arcane, who almost takes on this sort of similar emotional journey like Lucy. So how would you compare or differentiate the development that Lucy and Jinx will have in the future? That's a really good comparison. I didn't actually think <laughs> about that. Um, I like that. I think, yeah, I mean, with Arcane, it's like definitely a first episode. A very quick transformation and a flash forward. Um, with Lucy, you kind of see that happen slowly. Um, she spends the entire first episode as powder, essentially. She's innocent and naive. And it's only really when she leaves the vault and is put on the wasteland that she realizes she has to adapt um, or she won't survive. Um, so she changes. <laughs> Mystery. I absolutely love the heartfelt moments that Hank and Lucy share as father and daughter in the show, especially when he tells Lucy that she's his world. So what was it like to develop and explore that central dynamic with Ella and what was the most memorable moment? Oh gosh. Well, you know, as as actors, you know, you have to you have to begin these connections quickly, you know, and connect and create this reality that doesn't exist before you meet. So we both were aware of that. So we both just got we were really comfortable with each, each other, spent some time talking, got to know each other, recognized um, kind of what each person meant to the other, um, and then worked really hard during the little vignettes that we had to bring out as much care and love and affection as possible. And I think, you know, you can see that in the course as the way they set up their relationship. Um, and I, it was really easy with her, to be honest. I mean, she's just, she's very, very uh, available and aware and delightful and fun, um, super smart, very ta so talented as, a, as an actress. Um, and just, you know, we have a similar sense of humor. It's kind of fun. It's kind of irreverent. Um, so a lot of, a lot of ways that we connected. Oh. Um, and the moment in the, in the, when I have to put her in the one area and leave her and protection, you know, was, was easy to do because I had a lot of feeling and care for her. Who knows? All right. So for both of you, both Lucy and Maximus have their own unique skill sets that makes them powerful, like Lucy's adaptability and Maximus's confidence. What trait or characteristic from the other's character would you or your character want to have? Oh, that's a good question. I think for Lucy, oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. I mean, I like the, the, the morality of Lucy's character. I mm. like it. Uh, I think Maximus is attracted to it. Uh, you know, again, the point is to survive in the wasteland. <laughs> but, I, but I don't know. There's a middle ground somewhere. Definitely. I think our characters complement each other in that sort of aspect. There's a yeah. middle ground between the two of them that, that maybe is... Yeah. I, th I, I think in contrary to that, I think Lucy is really just looking for any way to survive. She doesn't... She doesn't know where to look, how how to adapt in this way. And I think there's a toughness to Maximus, a resilience that 
is has been bred just from ha like you said spending a lot of his life Thank in you. the yeah. Yeah. Super this, this guy Super cool. uh, so i think she would draw from his resilience yeah. one other question dune has had an incredible impact on society even now with part two and its themes of morality being the first paul atreides how do you think it's influenced the more serious undertones of hank or the more serialized aspects of fallout oh you know i mean dune is sort of the the original gangster of of all of all sci-fi feels like that there's there are references to it um, since it first came out in 1965 with Frank Herbert um, so it's had an impact on everything either directly or indirectly um, and I think uh, I think that the character of Paul um, you know he's he is a, a, a young untested prince um, that has great potential you know and I think um, the character of Hank, uh, you know, he is a, a man who's got, got tremendous positivity. I think he sees the potential in what he's doing. He's, you know, his goal is to create a better place for, for his people, for humanity. So he is, you know, he's definitely thinking of the future um, for, his, for his flock the people that are in the vault. There are so many action-packed moments outside of what fans have originally seen that really get chaotic like the Fallout game. So what stunts or moments on set made you both go, how can we get away with this? Ooh. Well, truly, you ain't seen nothing yet, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean it only gets crazier and crazier. Definitely, uh, without spoiling anything, episode three for me. I read that whole script and was like, mm. how? How am I gonna do this? Mm. Um, it's a lot of very heavy stunts and uh, Lucy really goes through it, yeah. let's put it that way. Can I concur? I'm gonna concur, episode three. It's episode three is a banger. Also, while I've only seen Hank in one episode so far, it feels like you're also channeling your inner Twin Peaks and Portlandia as this character. How do you think your roles as Dale Cooper and the mayor meshed into your performance as Hank? Well, the, the mayor of Portlandia is very positive and very upbeat and really believes in his city uh, and wants to do the best for his city. So very similar to Hank in that way because Hank has exactly the same kind of feelings for the people in his vault. I think for Dale Cooper, you know, there is a, there's also a positivity and a pleasure and a joy. And he's also a, Cooper is a, a natural leader, you know, and I think he leads by example. So I feel like this is also part of Hank's uh, character. And so I, you know, borrowed a little bit from both of those characters. 